Heisman Trophy winner. First round draft pick. Unanimous NFL MVP. Starting quarterback for the Baltimore Ravens. Continuous record breaker. 2019 season leader in passing touchdowns. Most rushing yards in a season ever by a quarterback. But Lamar Jackson being a troll? That's where I draw the line, buddy. Yeah, this feels like a dream. So YouTube, team keep it clean. What's going on? It's Engraven here with another video. And in this video, Lamar Jackson actually admitted to trolling so many people who thought he wanted to leave and thought that he was thinking about other options and whatnot. He admitted that he was messing with them the whole time. And it's no shock and it's no surprise or anything. But you know what? Let's let's hear Lamar Jackson's explanation. Man, just want to be grounded and let the community, you know, immune to me, you know, just it's like, okay, yeah, I can relate to him, you know, and I can be that guy, you know, when I get older and stuff like that to the younger generation and younger kids and stuff like that. Um, but it's a great organization, you know, um, very, very player um, friendly organization. Uh, and I love being here. I, always, I tweeted it before, like, you know, this is where I want to be at. So now I'm saying things like, oh, he, he wants out because I'm liking stuff. It's just, yeah, because I see y'all keep engaging in that, in that way. Like, oh, you want to leave? So I'm like, all right, I'm going to play back. Okay, yeah, I like something. You know, so let's be t shooting the st shooting my shots, you know, on, um, on social media because they, they like doing it to me, I guess. So there you have it. Lamar Jackson has a lot of titles, but one of them is also troll. And he was talking about how, hey, the media and people, they, they, they do it with him. They see him liking something and they're like, oh, man, he wants to leave. He wants to go. Uh, but he's like, he's just messing with people. He just messing with him because cause that's what they do to him. He's just simply returning the favor. And I know after seeing that, it put so many Ravens fans, their minds at ease. It allowed them to take a collective sigh of <sighs> relief uh, for them to know that Lamar Jackson doesn't want to go anywhere. Even though he's continued to express that he doesn't want to go anywhere. He's always said that he wants to be uh, a Raven for life. Um, but I, I can understand how people have been concerned and worried and whatnot uh, about this whole contract situation because it is. I was just talking to my guy David about it earlier. I, I think it is something that people should be concerned about because this is not just your average player. This is, and that's no offense to anybody because these are NFL players and this is their job. These are their careers. Um, but this is somebody who is a, a generational talent. This is somebody who is just so different than the norm. So any Ravens fans that, that have been stressing out about the contract and whatnot, I can understand why. I completely understand why. Because the Ravens have never, especially on offense, the Ravens have never had somebody like Lamar Jackson. So I empathize and sympathize with fans who are stressing out thinking, oh my goodness, when will this thing get done? Will it get done? Because they don't want to lose a player like Lamar Jackson. Somebody who obviously on the football field, he does his thing. But then even off the football field, somebody who a lot of fans aren't used to, especially at the quarterback position, being able to relate to so much on a different level. You see, that, that's big for a lot of people, and a lot of them, a lot of them realize it, and a lot of them don't even realize it. But y you want somebody like that to be the quarterback of your favorite team. And especially when you know what he's capable of doing. You know what he's done in the past, but you know what he's capable of doing too. Um, so, and you just know that everything with the Ravens, it goes through him, obviously. Everything goes through him, but you want to continue to see it go through him in the foreseeable future. So hopefully uh, the Ravens can make this thing happen sooner rather than later. But now, it, I mean, not that it's changed, but it's just a waiting game now. And it's always been a waiting game with this whole contract thing. We'll see how it plays out. Like we talked about in yesterday's video, um, even if they don't come to a contract agreement right here, right now, and it gets to the season and he's playing, I don't expect Lamar to be playing like, um, like all upset and whatnot. 
sitting there throwing passes like, oh, man, these Ravens ain't paying me. No, I, it, it ain't going to be nothing like that. It's not going to be any bad blood, any beef, anything like that. It's just all contract negotiations. This is all just part of it. It's, it's business. Like Lamar continued to say in the presser yesterday, it's business. Just as much as Lamar Jackson knows his business, Eric DaCosta, Steve Bashotti, John Hall, they know his business too. And in negotiations, both sides are trying to fight to see if, if they can end up winning against the other side. Because in negotiations, somebody's got to come out losing. Not, not everybody can come out a winner. You can't get everything that you want uh, in, nego in the negotiation process. There's going to have to be some compromise, but it's all about who's going to be willing to compromise more. Will it be Lamar Jackson? Will it be the Baltimore Ravens? We'll see. But real quick, shout out to Chels because she was actually the one that brought that video uh, to my attention. Because I had no clue about it. I didn't know about it. But she put us on. So shout out to Chels. Appreciate you. Now, um, speaking of Lamar Jackson in the future. Uh, we got a question from my guy, John C. He said, hey, Engraven, first off, love everything you do and keep up the good work. I oh, appreciate you. He said, secondly, I want to ask you, do you really think Lamar or any player deserves a fully guaranteed deal? Because personally, I do not think so. I love Lamar. Appreciate it. <laughs> hey, 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 Y'all heard it? Y'all heard it? You heard it? You heard it? <laughs> he said, I love Lamar. Appreciate everything he has done for the Ravens, but you know what's coming after somebody says something like that. He says, but there comes a time where you start to wonder if you're laying out too much for one player. Let's just continue before we get started. He said, the Ravens still have players that they will have to resign in the future, and a $230 million guaranteed makes that difficult to do. Difficult? A little bit. Impossible? Not at all. Uh, I honestly think if Lamar doesn't win MVP and can't get the Ravens to a Super Bowl or at least the AFC Championship, then franchise tag and trade for a bunch of first-rounders. And we can try out one of the QBs from the Stack 2023 draft class, which are full of talent. Thanks. Ooh. Oh, man. Yes. Disagree to, to the max right here. Because my thing is, why would you want to start over? Why would you want to start over just because you got to pay somebody some bread? You, wanna, you, you really, really willing to start all over? Me? I'm not. Again, Lamar Jackson is not just your average quarterback. Like, yeah, shout out to all the guys that's coming out of the draft in 2023, but you have Lamar Jackson right here, right now, and you haven't even maximized his potential. Why would you want to let him leave for a couple of draft picks? Even if you got two, three draft, first round draft, you would want Lamar to leave for that? And it's like, with the draft, we know it's a risk. Nothing is guaranteed. But with Lamar Jackson, you, again, he hasn't even, he scratched the surface a little bit, but not as, as, he ain't tore down the surface yet. He is capable of so much more than he's even done, and he's done a lot. So, to, for, 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 to no, if, if to franchise tag him and trade him, no, why, what? No, I, mm -mm, I can't get behind this, not one bit, man, not at all. But that that's, no. Now, as far as the, the guaranteed money, um, I wouldn't be mad at Lamar at all asking for fully guaranteed. We don't know what he's asking for. Those apparently are the rumors that he wants more guaranteed money. And I mean, why wouldn't he? Deshaun Watson, he, he ain't looking at Deshaun Watson contract like it's the, the outlier. No, of course he's not. I'm sure he'd be looking at that like, hey, I want that to be my norm. But anyway, like in football, these dudes, not only can their careers change at the, the, the blink of an eye, um, but their lives can Because football is obviously a very dangerous sport It's a very violent sport It's a very physical sport Well Lamar Jackson He is asked to be QB1 Obviously starting quarterback for the Baltimore Ravens But then he's also asked to be RB1 Because they, they run him a lot So the fact that he has to do so much For the football team And be such a big part of what they do Why not ask for the most money Why not ask for guaranteed money why not ask for all the bread that you can possibly get? Why not? If you, at your job, if you had to do this, you had to do your own job, and you had to do another job, and you had been doing all these different jobs for four years straight, and you had been underpaid, and a lot of your peers around you do some of the same, some may do less, some may do more, but a lot of your peers around you they getting paid a boatload of money. 
Are you gonna be like, oh, no, um, no, I, I, I could just go to a, a different company, and we'll see how it works out there. No, you're gonna be, you're gonna want to get paid from the company that you're at for everything that you have done and everything that you're doing. You're gonna want to get your bread. So I don't fault Lamar for trying to get his. And I mean, we, we done started doing a couple questions. We might as well throw in a couple more before we get out of here. Next question came from my guy, BB. He said, has Isaiah likely taken the tight end two position away from Nick Boyle? And should the Ravens keep Boyle or trade him? What are your thoughts? Now, I don't think he's taking anything because we haven't seen a game yet. We haven't seen a game. Now, I, I think they will definitely try to get him out there a lot. Now, and and I, could, I could understand how you could think that, they, that he may have taken it already based off of the preseason uh, because he was out there. Then they took him out. Then Nick Boyle was out there a lot. He was out there a whole lot. Uh, but at this point, trading Nick Boyle, oh, I mean, you might as well keep him. Might as well. Um, you got an extra offensive lineman slash tight end pass catcher. Um, yeah, you might as well keep him and, and hope that, hey, that the, he's really just getting his feet back under him again. Um, so you have even more depth at, at the position. Uh, Isaiah likely, though, I, I do expect him to be out there a lot. I do expect him to uh, eventually play more uh, than Nick Boyle um, simply because of everything that he can do um, and, and how much of a, a weapon and a threat that he is on a football field as opposed to, to a Nick Boyle. And that's no offense to Nick Boyle, of course. Um, but Isaiah likely is just they're, they're two different types of tight ends. Isaiah likely the, the, the playmaking tight end, Nick Boyle the blocking tight end. So I think they're going to want to have that playmaking tight end out there on the field a lot more to make plays. Next question came from my guy Sebastian. He said, I just rewatched Flacco's Super Bowl run and Joe was really gambling with the football with them throws, man. Risky throws, yet Anquan comes down with it every time. Anquan is a big physical dude, can't be pushed around, and I love it. Lamar seems to have his Tory and Jacoby and Bateman and Demarcus. Ooh, I, yo, no, I don't get Tory and Jacoby from Bateman and Demarcus Robinson. Maybe Tory Smith from Demarcus Robinson, but Jacoby uh, or Tory Smith as Bateman? Nah, oh, no, 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 no. I you don't get that at all. Bateman is more of a, uh, I think he has definitely had the potential to be better receivers than those guys. Those guys are big play guys, deep threat guys. And Bateman can be a deep threat guy, but he's more well-rounded as far as being a route runner than those guys are. He's more polished, I guess. Um, but he said, uh, Lamar seems to have his Torian, Jacoby, and Bateman, and Demarcus. You think likely can be the Anquan to Lamar? I've heard of quite a bit of people um, compare likely to Anquan Bolden. And, hey, hopefully he can be because he's big. He's a little shifty guy, uh, especially for a tight end. And um, if he can be that, that would be great because that would give Lamar – Somebody else that he could trust. Somebody else he could throw it up to and they come down with it. They go up and get it. Uh, that third down receiver will slash tight end or whatever. Um, and just somebody who's just reliable. If likely can be that, then we're likely to have a lot of success. Next question came from the guy, Ethan. He said, this is the Wednesday before the game. And I, am I the only one whose heart strings feel a little pulled seeing Flacco start against us? I'm only 20 and this man was the first quarterback I was blessed to actually watch. Anyway... Lamar finna do his thing. Ravens flock all day. Have a good day, sir. See, Ethan, the emotions were kicking in for Ethan. But then he quickly realized, he said, wait a minute. Flacco's the enemy now. So I ain't riding with Flacco no more. It's Lamar all day. This question came from my guy, Deshaun. He said, I'm watching the Ravens Wired episode three, and it features Demarcus Robinson. He talks about how he got here. His words were, what made me come here was the call from Eric DaCosta. He gave me a call, and I said, I am leaving the Raiders for the moment. And I was checking a couple of other teams, but he was the first to call, which sounds like the Raiders wanted him back on the practice squad. He goes on to say, I went to Arizona to meet him and we had a long talk Thursday and Friday before the Cardinals game. He also said, once I came here for a visit, everyone made me feel like this could be home and I didn't want to leave. He also mentions about meeting Lamar and a couple other guys whose name he didn't mention apparently wanted him in this offense. Could we finally see what is in the vault this year? Uh, I don't know what this means to anyone else, but to me it says a lot because we heard about a lot of guys not wanting to come and play in this type of offense, but it seems like DeMarcus is invested in his team and he wants to be here. Uh, sorry for the long message. Please don't apologize for that. I mean, of, of course he'll want to be here. He, he, he got like fired from his last job and, and the Ravens hired him. They cut the check. Like, of course he's going to want to be here. But, no, nah, it, it's cool, though. I, I um... I didn't even know. I didn't realize that his uh, his did we say his uncle or his cousin was Marcus Robinson. I never knew that. I because because I just figured okay, Rob, Robinson is such a common last name. It's such a common last name. I ain't putting to like if if there was somebody like that came on our team named like Suggs or something like that 
or even Reed. Reed is a lot more common than Suggs, but if somebody last name Reed, well, nah, Reed wouldn't really stick out because we had David Reed, and I never thought him and Ed Reed were cousins. But if we had somebody like named Suggs or somebody like Roll, like Samari Roll, McAllister maybe, but y'all see what I'm, oh, somebody named Flacco. If we had somebody named Flacco, like I think Tom Flacco tried out for the Ravens, didn't he? No, he, I think he was on a different team in the preseason some, some years back. But anyway, you see what I'm saying? If it was like a, a, a more like irregular last name, then it would have caught my eye. But with it being Robinson, I, I ain't even think twice about it. But then they were like, oh, no, that, that's his, uh, his cousin or his uncle. So oh, I was like, okay, let's go then. But um, no, nah, man, yeah, uh, ho hopefully that vault can be, they can go into that vault. They can empty it out this season because um, they have options. They have different guys that can do different things. But it's up to them to maximize the talent that's on that team. Next question came from my guy Christian. He said, what's going on, Engraving? I've been watching you since your lunch break car videos. <laughs> hey, appreciate it. Uh, but this is my first time submitting a question. Congratulations on being able to do this full time. Hey, thank you. Uh, he said, and thanks for being a positive uh, person in my life and, and by being a great father to Carter and your positive messages. Uh, I have a little one and she's a daddy's girl. Oh, hey, shout out to you and your, and your little girl, man. Uh, I just wanted to get your opinion on a recent depth chart release. I don't know if you've already covered it. No, I, I haven't. Uh, he said, this stood out to me. What do you think? Devin DuVernay being wide receiver two over Demarcus Robinson. I think that would change. I, I, as far as the depth charts, I, I don't get like too caught up in them um, because you have different formations. You have different plays and stuff. You got different packages and whatnot. So a depth chart is, is essentially, oh, yeah, these are who the starters are or whatnot. But everything depends on snaps. I, 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 just, I don't see Devin DuVernay as their wide receiver two. I, I, I just don't. Uh, I see it as Bateman and, and Robinson uh, with Proche uh, in the slot, him being that sort of quote-unquote wide receiver three, whatever. Um, but I, I don't see Devin DuVernay as their wide receiver two. Um, he obviously is the, wow, is him and Proche the longest tenant Ravens receivers right now? They are. They are. They are. Wow. Um, so, yeah, a lot of youth, a lot of uh, inexperience too. But um, as far as for people who are the longest Ravens, at the wide receiver position. But I, I don't really think too much of it. I think it'll be Demarcus Robinson out there. Even if it's not right away, then I think it'll be like early on eventually. Um, he also said J.K. Dobbins is listed as RB1 and King and Drake RB4 behind Justice. Yeah, no. I I, I don't take nothing. In, I don't take like, not that I don't take it into account, but I just, I don't think anything by it. Because they, to sign a veteran, I, and with J.K. Dobbins, we know he's still hurt. Like, Lamar let it out the bag yesterday. He's like, hey, J.K. Dobbins, hopefully he'll be out there the next couple of weeks. I like, oh, okay, Lamar, you, you dropping that, huh? Thanks for letting us know. Um, but, th yeah, they didn't, I don't think they signed Ken Drake to be running back four. I would just sign a vet veteran to be RB4. Like, think about it. Uh, so I don't take none to that. And it says, likely is the third string tight end. He said, he's my favorite rookie. He, he might be Ravens' favorite rookie, too. Um, <clears throat> but, again, even with that, you know likely he's going to be out there. You know he's going to be out there. I'm assuming uh, tight end two would be Nick Boyle. But you know you know likely he's going to be out there. Uh, and then it said Kyle Hamilton is back up free safety, but I thought he was a strong safety. I think Kyle Hamilton is just a safety. Um, but either way, like, even with him being a backup, to, well, free safety, strong safety, whatever, he, he's going to be out there as a safety. Like, he's a first-round pick and he's a defensive player. No, he's he going to be out there on that field. So I... Honestly, wouldn't even worry about the depth chart like that. And now we got two more questions that came from our Team Keep It Clean patrons. And special shout out to all the Team Keep It Clean patrons. Appreciate y'all. If anybody would like to become a patron, you can. If you don't want to, you know, you can't. It, it's fine. Either way, it's fine. So, uh, the two newest patrons are John B. and Guy C. Appreciate that. Appreciate y'all. Thank you. And Guy, he had a, a question. He said... Engraven, just want to uh, bring some positive vibes, man. You have worked so hard to do what you do. Uh, you make me proud to be a part of the flock. Thank you for the integrity, positivity, entertainment, and joy uh, you bring to my day. I don't have a question, but just wanted to say let's go Ravens flock. It's a blessing being able to watch our team put hard work, talent, and teamwork on the field for one another and our entertainment. Couldn't ask for a better community to enjoy this franchise with. Big trust and God bless, fam. Wow. Hey, I, I appreciate this, man. Thank you. Thank you for that, that, that positive message. Uh, thank you for uh, becoming a patron. Thank you for showing support. Thank you for, <coughs> excuse me, rocking with Team Keep It Clean, man. I, I, we appreciate it. We, we appreciate you. Uh, we appreciate uh, the positive message because it's, it's something that we all need to hear. Everybody be going through different type of stuff. Everybody got their own issues, their trials, their struggles and whatnot. 
So hearing stuff like this is much appreciated. So thank you. And the last question on what has turned into an episode of question from subs came from Heidi, another Team Keep It Clean patron. So we appreciate you. Say good morning, Engraving and Team Keep It Clean. We've got a few more days left until the season starts. Well, till Raven season starts. Yeah. But anyway, he said, um, I wanted to ask, what are you most excited to see this season? Me personally, I'm excited to see how our defense will look this year. New defensive coordinator, fully healed secondary, two new studs, safeties, and more. Then Bengals ain't getting 500 yards this year. Oh, yeah. Maybe they just get like 498 or something. <laughs> I'm just playing. No, but hey, uh, but let me finish. He said, peace and blessings to you and team keep it clean. Appreciate it, Hattie. Um, I, uh, what I'm most excited to see is really just a, a healthy Ravens team because we haven't seen it uh, in a while. A healthy Ravens team. At least healthy, the majority healthy because we know injuries are going to happen. Not everybody going to be suited up all the time and whatnot. But a majority healthy Ravens team. Um, but as if I had to pick one, uh, it'll be the offense just to see how they do, what they're consistent in, what they struggle in, uh, what they succeed in, just really everything. Just to just to see them bounce back from adversity, to see if they can dominate, um, just to see the whole package and, and just see them if they can really maximize all of their guys. Yeah, this feels like a dream. Ain't no chance what I mean. You see my boy.